Irkutsk, Siberia, Russia. Located almost 7,500 kilometers and seven time zones to the east, the city serves as the gateway for an expedition aimed at testing diving equipment under the most extreme conditions. The seven members of the dive expedition team brought along 18 pieces of luggage full of testing equipment. However, additional equipment such as safety lines, ice drills, chainsaws, and of course food needs to be acquired locally. Mars SSI Revo Dive Expedition Team has reserved two days for these final preparations in Irkutsk. They are also using this time to acclimate themselves and do some sightseeing. At the Angara River, the only outlet of Lake Baikal, the team gets a first impression of the enormous power and vastness which defines everything around here. The river carries over 4,500 cubic meters of water per second. So it's no wonder that some use a quiet moment to plead for a safe journey. Everyone knows this will exceed diving limits both in terms of technical equipment and in terms of every person involved. The idea to start a dive expedition team was born two years ago when we acquired SSI, and it solidified over the past two years, most recently when we acquired Revo. We needed to assemble a team of divers and experts who could help us to further expand our product and service offering. Of course, it is always challenging to be with a group of people for 10 days that might not have worked together in the past, to bind them together as a team and make sure that everything runs smoothly. But I think it worked out well, and I hope that nobody goes home and says that he or she isn't particularly happy with what we have accomplished over here. Maris SSI was looking for a female underwater model with some experience in the XRTXR space. As the date of departure approached, I started thinking more and more about this trip about the temperature, the ice, about Lake Baikal, and Russia overall. The members of the expedition team had heard quite a bit about the gift of improvisation, which is virtually part of the genetic makeup in areas beyond the limits of civilization. So, the seven Germans are pleasantly surprised to see how thought through and professional the ice diving preparations at Lake Baikal are. Once a suitable location is found, the chainsaw is put to work on the ice for the first time. As all the logistics are in experienced Siberian hands, the dive team can concentrate on planning the dive and preparing the equipment. As a company, we have fully expanded now. We cover the entire range of diving, from one end to the other. On the one hand, the dive team helps us to better understand all requirements. On the other hand, it also helps us to thoroughly test our products in this environment. But before testing can start, the mandatory check dive needs to take place. While all participants have extensive experience diving under ice, they nevertheless have to get used to these extreme conditions. Right from the start, the divers are thrilled about the snow-free ice, which simplifies the not-so-ordinary line routing. You have to take a line with you, and it's important that you are trained properly. 
just like we are here at SSI through our ice diving specialty. All members of the team underwent training and did training dives before coming here. The XR and TXR training at SSI is absolutely doable if you are committed. Thanks to the structure of the training, you can start slowly and end up doing incredibly beautiful dives later on. It's important that you aren't claustrophobic, meaning not afraid of being in an enclosed space, because there is only one hole in the ice measuring 1.5 by 1.5 meters, and you have to get back out through there. Full of new impressions, the team starts on an hour-long journey across Lake Baikal towards the camp, which is located in the tiny village of Kuzer on Olchen Island. At the bonfire, everyone talks about their first experiences and pays tribute to Boken, the spirit of Lake Baikal. Fittingly, this is done drinking ice-cold vodka. The time for preparations and first impressions is over. All the equipment is loaded into the UAZ 452 buses. On the lake, rail-mounted containers are hitched to the buses and the search for a dive site begins. Now it really starts, and all participants are focused on their numerous tasks. Not every location on Lake Baikal is suitable for diving. You need to find a site near the shore where the ice is the thinnest, meaning it has a thickness of just over one meter. Therefore, the thickness of the ice needs to be checked over and over again using a drill. Once a suitable location is found, the camp is set up and the entry and exit hole for the divers is prepared. Make a hole in this massive sheet of ice is hard labor. Using a chainsaw, blocks of ice are sawn and then pried out one by one. Finally, using sharp ice picks, access to the crystal clear water is gained. The next steps, however, are a piece of cake for the team members, the assembly of the diving equipment. When we first thought about this project, about coming here to Lake Baikal and to this environment, this landscape, these extreme conditions, we obviously contemplated what equipment we would want to use. How would the equipment even react and hold up under these conditions? That was an essential question with regard to the volume and selection of the material. It was relatively clear to us that we wanted to focus primarily on XR during this project. But we also thought that since we had the chance to be here under these conditions, it would be very interesting to see for ourselves how the material holds up in real life after conducting all the usual lab and experimental tests on our regulators. Not only were the regulators subjected to extremely low temperatures, but the Revo breather was also thoroughly tested. 
die größten Herausforderungen für den Revo waren die. The biggest challenge for the Revo was the ambient temperature, which was negative 20, negative 25 degrees Celsius. The problem is that you have to make sure that there is no water in the mouthpiece in the DSV, so that the mushroom valves don't freeze. Die Mushroom valves nicht eingefrieren. Even in the preliminary stages, we were very curious about the effect of the extreme temperature differences that we experience here on the technology. In fact, you have to take the camera out of the car just before you enter the water, because if you wait any longer, you step out of the car where the temperature is slightly above zero and into negative 20 degrees. Everything freezes immediately even though the water temperature is a few degrees above zero, so relatively warm again, everything freezes, especially during repetitive dives when the casing is already wet. All the buttons freeze, and barely noticeable layers of ice form on the dome port. It is only once you are underwater that you realize that something is not quite right with the focus, and you start to rub and look and are a bit puzzled. It is a very safe device underwater because the gas flow is very low compared to the open circuit and therefore it is very safe for diving. It is also great for taking pictures because we don't produce any bubbles and as a result everything is always clear under the ice and there are no big air bubbles that collect and obstruct the view. Ja, das Highlight ist schon, wenn du unter Wasser bist, wenn du da in diesen Kanälen bist, wenn du praktisch äh, mal eine Eisstärke von... The highlight is being underwater in these channels, where the ice has a thickness of 7 meters. We saw on the computer that it is 7 meters thick. So you just know that there is an enormous amount of ice above you. And interestingly, the sheets of ice are not solid. They are wedged into each other. So when you touch a sheet, it shifts. You have to be very careful when you enter such narrow channels, because they can shift in seconds. I had one experience where I was in between two very narrow sheets to take a picture, and just that instant, the ice sheets were dislodged by our bubbles, and the ice sheets shifted a few centimeters towards me. That was a very scary moment, and I thought, damn, this could get tight. But afterwards you say, wow, you were under tons of ice, in a tight squeeze. You've experienced the enormous power of nature. Diving here is really mind-blowing. It is an incredible experience and absolutely beautiful. The underwater landscape, the distortions, the cracks, the sounds you hear, it's insane. It's the same above water, of course. The land is so vast, it's unfathomable. The lake has a length of 673 kilometers and a maximum depth of 1,642 meters. Baikal is the deepest lake on Earth, but in spite of the beauty of the landscape, one needs to pay attention to navigation and all the other relevant pieces of information. The divers must keep in mind that both people and technology are brought to their limits. they also need to have fun under the massive ice. As the piled up ice sheets can often be moved quite easily, the new trend sport underwater ice frisbee is practiced. But for all the fascination, the main focus was still on testing the various parts of the equipment. 
However, the new technical possibilities at Lake Baikal also mean that there is an enormous workload to handle. The development team is already waiting for all the results we've collected and thoroughly documented this week. That's very important because it's the basis for future developments. We have already shared some information. It's crazy when you think about it. In 2008, there was still no electricity around here. And now you can communicate via WhatsApp and email, which is great because quite a bit of information was already transmitted online. If anybody thought they could relax in the evening after those strenuous dives in the daytime, they were wrong. Inside the well-heated camp, data is analyzed. Experiences and impressions are exchanged. Equipment is prepared for the upcoming day. Plans are nailed down and photos and videos are edited late into the night. I was always dead tired when I went to bed and slept all night like a log. You think you are not doing that much. You go diving twice a day and take a few pictures. But it is really one thing after the other. You are very involved in the whole production, and everybody has a precise idea of what needs to be done. Everybody knows their position, and it's just an enormous amount of things you have to do in these few days of production that just need to be accomplished. These amphibian vehicles are ideally suited to reach inaccessible areas of Lake Baikal, which measures over 31,500 square miles. Once the spot is located, the daily routine of preparation begins. The implementation of Lake Baikal Ice Diving Specialties, as the team jokingly calls it. A diver should always keep on learning. That's essential. Otherwise, he will get stuck in his comfort zone and doesn't learn anything new, can't improve. You always need to get out of your comfort zone in life in order to be able to improve. And that includes taking a different class once in a while that might be outside of the norm. You need to prepare for dives like these. You always have to take a line with you to be able to find the exit. Proper training is very important. Diving around here is not the same as the ice diving I did before. The landscape, the cold, the fascinating, colossal ice, the powerful nature. The Verwerfung under water, the distortions underwater, the enormous magnitude, the light show. I've never seen anything like this before. Das habe ich bisher so nicht gekannt. You can watch this on TV, but being right in the middle of these masses of moving ice with the most bizarre shapes and structures, below and above the water, has left me with memories and a fascination that will last forever. Fascinating. Unforgettable. Every dive site is different. Every time they descend below the ice, the divers await a new and fascinating universe of shapes. But it's not just the ice formations that are different every single time. Visibility varies, just like the weather varies above the several meters of ice, which only lets in some rays of light now and then. 
In spite of the seemingly inhospitable conditions, the temperature underwater is around zero degrees Celsius, so relatively warm. Just imagine, you just got out of the water, and after you've moved around for a mere minute or two, everything, and I mean absolutely everything, is frozen. The suit, the regulator. At the back of the first stage, a huge ball begins to form, which looks like a light bulb around the first stage. It's really incredible. I could have imagined this happening over a certain amount of time, but I didn't expect that it could happen that fast. Nobody expected that. One expedition day ends and the next one begins. This time the team wants to explore a dive site near the shore of Olchan Island. Because there is dense birch forest, snowmobiles are used to survey the area. This way the team members can also take in the charming landscape above water before they venture out onto the ice to find a suitable entry point. Once the dive site is located, the supply vehicles follow. I think diving in this environment is a similar experience to many other extreme sports. If you think about what kinds of sports people do in extreme conditions, I think this is a similar affair. It's not just about the effect of diving under the ice. It's also about the moment, about being part of this whole affair, and about experiencing oneself in a different way than under safe conditions. It's about questioning oneself. Can I really do this? Do I have the right amount of training? Do I have the right training? Do I have enough experience? And having the right background, you encourage yourself again and again. You could see that from the very beginning. It took two or three dives to really feel comfortable. And you also experience a real sense of satisfaction. Because you extend your own limits. And that is something anybody who wants to broaden their horizon or to extend their range, as we like to call it at Mares, really values. Range to extend, we were by Mares saying, that's a tolle Erfahrung. Once the sky brightens, it's off below the crystal clear ice one more time. The underwater world is awash with light, which stands in stark contrast to all the dives on previous days. It's a great experience. What worked perfectly were our XR tech stages and our second stages, which gave us no problems whatsoever. Not a single stage froze either. They are really highly recommended for any cold water dive. We basically received confirmation for everything we have developed and thought about over all these years. Today, I can personally confirm and the team can confirm all the knowledge we've gained from other tests not involving us. The team can now say, yes, we've seen it and know exactly how resilient our regulators are. No doubt. Our material withstands the most extreme conditions found on Earth. We are really proud of that. Apart from the excitement about the goals of the mission, there are also some critical comments. What's here so a bit fehlt, 
What's missing for me is some female support. I'm here with six men for 10 days. It would be cool to have some more women. It's really not that difficult. A lot more women could do this. I don't understand why technical diving should be just for men. Why don't we see more women doing this? So the goal is set to attract more women. And there also seems to be changes coming regarding the choice of camera. The equipment was tailor-made for these extreme conditions and worked brilliantly. In fact, the only problem we had was the camera itself, which was struggling with the extreme temperature differences that were also present in the housing, of course. The last dives take place in bright sunshine and downright mild temperatures. Ideal conditions for divers under clear ice. The team members above the ice can practically accompany their colleagues under the ice. Now, the recreational diving equipment is also put to use under these icy conditions. In addition to conducting these final tests, there is plenty of time to shoot photos and videos. After all, the highlight of diving in Lake Baikal should be appropriately documented. My personal highlight is that I was able to experience how fantastic Siberia is. That Russia isn't just the Russia we know from the media, but that there's also religion, shamanism, Buddhism. That the people have a special way of understanding nature and see themselves as part of nature in this cosmos. That was a totally awesome experience for me. They are all dads and moms, so safety was a very important aspect. Safety first, at all times. Nothing happened. And I think I can bring everyone back to their families safe and sound. The Morris SSI Revo crew had a very intense and busy week of diving. It's time to thank Bolkin and drink to a successful mission. The seven Baikal explorers are thrilled. They feel a mix of melancholy and anticipation because at the campfire, they are already planning the next mission for the dive expedition team. <laughs>